Hello everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel. We thank God for today and pray for knowledge and understanding. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, today we are going to study permutation. For us to understand the concept of permutation, we have to first of all recall the concept of uh, factorial. Factorial is a function denoted by this. Okay? The domain is the set of natural number union. The single thing says zero. And the codomain is the natural number. What does it do? For any natural number given to it, n factorial, okay, it gives you the product of the first n consecutive natural numbers. So by this definition, we have that if you give it number like 3, a natural number, it gives you 1 times 2 times 3. Okay? If you give it 4, 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right. So with this definition, with this definition of factorial, I want us to see that... If you have any two natural numbers, A, B, if you have A, B, natural numbers, such that uh, A is less than B, we have that A factorial is a factor of B factorial. If you have two natural numbers, such that Two natural numbers a b so that a is less than b a factorial is a factor of b factorial all right what do we mean by this okay let's take two natural numbers say three and uh, four three is less than four by four factorial we mean the product of the first four consecutive uh, natural numbers so we have a uh, one times two three that's the first four consecutive natural numbers. That is four factorial, the product of that. Okay? Which we can write as you can start as you can start from four because multiplication is uh, commutative. Since multiplication is commutative, we can write it this way. Okay? Now observe that three factorial is equal to three times two times one. Okay, the product of the first three nat consecutive uh, natural numbers. Okay, now observe that three factorial is a factor of uh, four factorial. Okay, because look at four factorial. From here, from here is three factorial. Okay, so we can write four factorial as what? Equal to four times three factorial. All right. Now, having noted this, let us now compute uh, the following. Compute two factorial, two factorial times three factorial. Observe that this is not equal to. It's not equal to two times three factorial. It is not equal to that. Okay, two factorial times three factorial. Is equal to 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we have this equal to 2 times 6, which is equal to 12. Okay? Four factoria plus five factoria. Okay. Observe that it is not equal to. It is not equal to four plus five factoria. Is equal to four factoria. Four times three times two times one plus five times four times three times two times one. Okay, this is equal to 
4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So we have 24 plus 24 times 5. That's 120. All right. So 24 plus 120 gives us uh, 144. All right. Okay. Observe that here you can decide to factorize and then continue. For example, you know, 4 factorial is common. You can factorize that 4 factorial, okay? Equal to 4 factorial. You have here 1 plus uh, 5, okay? So that gives you 4 factorial times 6. All right. Now, what is 4 factorial? That's 24 times 6. And that gives you the 144. Okay? So you are free to use any of the methods. All right. Now, let's compute a 8 factorial over 5 factorial. All right. Please, 8 factorial over 5 factorial is not equal to 8 over 5 factorial. All right? Observe that 5 is less than 8. And so, 5 factorial is a factor of 8 factorial. So, 8 factorial is equal to 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial over 5 factorial. Okay? Expand it this way so that I can see it clearly that this 5 factorial cancels this. All right. Please, factorial does not cancel factorial because factorial is a function. So, it has to act on the argument. Okay, but we cancelled 5 factorial here and 5 factorial here because it's the same. And so we have this, 8 times 7 times 6 equal to 3, 3, 6. All right, now let's look at the other problem. 5 factorial times 4 factorial over 6 factorial is equal to, 6 factorial is equal to 6 times 5 factorial. Okay, 5 factorial cancels this. Okay, this is 4 factorial, so 4 times 3 factorial, 6. Okay, this is equal to 4. Okay, this is because 4 factorial is equal to three, 4 times 3 factorial. And you know, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So that is why I cancel the 3 factorial. 3 factorial cancels, uh, cancels uh, 6. Okay? So these two are the same. All right. So we have this. Another example. M factorial over M minus 1 factorial. Okay? M minus 1 is less than N. Okay? So N is a product of uh, some integers and the uh, n minus 1 factorial, okay? So I can express n as product of uh, some integers and the uh, n minus 1 factorial. So this is equal to n into n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial, all right? n factorial over n minus 1 factorial is equal to n factorial is n into n minus 1 factorial. I stopped here because I have n minus 1 here. So that's why, because I have n minus 1 factorial here. So I stopped so that I can cancel out. I cancel this and this. And I have what? I have n remaining. All right. Now, Let's talk about uh, permutation, okay? By permutation, we mean oddly arrangement, okay? At times, uh, there are needs to arrange things. You arrange book, books in a library. You arrange yourself for a match past and so many other things, okay? In that arrangement, you find out that the order is important. In that case... A, B is not the same thing as B, A, all right? Because of uh, the order, because the order is not the same. We can arrange 
letters or numbers for identification. We can arrange letters or numbers for identification. For example, you can identify someone with a zero one and you identify the other one with one zero or two three, three two. These are different uh, identification. So that is arrangement. So given some physical quantities, given some quantities and uh, you are asked to arrange them, it can be done. And the number of such arrangement is not infinite. It is finite. We can determine them. The listing can be cumbersome manually, but we can determine the number of ways such can be done with our knowledge of uh, permutation. Okay? For example, given three letters A, B, C, you are to arrange it in twos. Observe that these are the possible ways you can arrange it. All right? So we have six possible ways of arranging this in twos. The permutation formula says that if you have N, R, natural numbers, such that uh, r is less or equal to n okay you have a n r natural number so that r is less or equal to n and uh, you want to arrange uh, n in r's okay the number of ways you can arrange n objects taking r of it at a time is what we call n permutation r and it is denoted by this you can also denote it by this all right and it is equal to it is equal to n factorial you see why we studied factorial n factorial over n minus r factorial This is the number of ways you can arrange n objects taking r of it at a time. Okay, so for this particular example here, ABC, that we arrange taking two of it at a time, we have three permutation two. And by our formula, it is equal to three factorial over three minus two factorial. This is equal to 3 factorial over 1 factorial, which is equal to 3 factorial. And you know 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1 equal to 6. All right, beautiful. Can you see that is giving us 6? And that is exactly what we have here when we arranged. Okay? So with this formula now, we can compute the following. Okay, compute 5 permutation 3, n minus 1 permutation n minus 2. So for this, 5 permutation 3 is equal to 5 factorial over 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, which gives us a All right, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial over 2 factorial. This cancels this, and you have 5 times 4, 20 times 3, 60. Beautiful. N minus 1 permutation N minus 3. This is equal to N minus 1 factorial. All over m minus one minus m minus three. All right, use your brackets very well so that you don't make mistake. So that this we this is equal to. So here we have uh, n minus n is zero. I have minus. Remember factorial. Okay. 
all factorial. All right. So we have a minus 1 plus 3, which is 2 factorial. So we have this equal to m minus 1 factorial over 2. 2 factorial is equal to 2. So that is what we have there. All right. Now, if m permutation 2 is equal to 56, find n. Now, from your permutation formula, we know that m factorial over m minus 2 factorial. From your permutation formula, m permutation 2 is equal to m factorial over m minus 2 factorial. So you are told that it is equal to 56. Find n. All right. Now let us expand. Observe that the denominator here is uh, less than the numerator. So it is a factor of the numerator. And so we have... Okay, n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 factorial. I stopped at n minus 2 factorial because I can see it here as a denominator because it is here as a denominator. So I can now cancel out the two. I will have all right, canceling out this, we have the n into n minus 1 is equal to 56. All right, there are two ways. One way is to expand this and have a quadratic equation, which you can solve. Another way is to note that this is two consecutive, this is the product of two consecutive numbers equal to 56. So you are free to use either of the ways. Now, suppose I expand, I will have that n squared n squared minus n minus 56 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation which we can factorize and uh, solve to get that n is equal to n is equal to 8. All right? Remember, if you solve a quadratic equation, you are going to get uh, this or this. So you, you, if you solve this, you, will, you get that n is equal to 8 or minus 7. But you know, our n here is a natural number, so it cannot be minus 7. That is why n is equal to 8. What if you don't want to follow this way? You can also use the idea that a two consecutive product of two consecutive numbers is equal to this. Okay? And you know that 56 is equal to 8 times 7. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 and 7. All right? Now observe that this n into m minus 1 is equal to 8 into 8 minus 1. With this, this implies that uh, n is equal to 8. Now suppose you are given that there is 8, I have r, you are asked to find r. 8 permutation r is equal to 56, find r. Suppose you are asked to do that. How do you do that? Okay? We learn the method. Once you know the method, then you can solve any. So let's see how we are going to tackle this one. All right? Using our permutation formula, we have... All right? I can cross multiply. And I will have, dividing through by 56, I have, this is a 8 factorial, and I have 56 here. Remember, 8 factorial is equal to 8 times 7 times uh, 6 times 5. Let me stop here. If there is need, I will expand more. 56 equal to 8 minus r factorial. 8 times 7 is 56, so let me cancel out this. 
So what I have here is 6 times 5 factorial, which is the same thing as 6 factorial. So I have that 6 factorial is equal to 8 minus R factorial. Recall that given A, B not equal to 0, such that A factorial is equal to B factorial. This implies that A is equal to B. Given A, B not equal to 0, such that A factorial is equal to B factorial, we have that A is equal to B. So using the same argument here, we have that 6 is equal to 8 minus R. This implies that R is equal to 8 minus 6. All right, beautiful. If n permutation 4 is equal to 12 times n permutation 2, find n. This means that uh, n factorial over n minus 4 factorial is equal to 12 times n factorial over n minus 2 factorial. All right, okay? So we resolve this and find the value for our and find the value for n. All right. Observe that you can decide to cross multiply. So let's cross multiply. We'll have all right. Okay. So let's allow it this way. Let us now divide through with n factorial times n minus four factorial. We have All right, this cancels this. Yes, we have 12 here. Observe that n minus 4 factorial is a factor of n minus 2 factorial. So we can expand this this way and have, remember this one cancels this. So we have here, All right, beautiful. So what happens? This cancels this, and you are left with n minus 2 into n minus 3 equal to 12. Okay? Now, you can expand. You have a quadratic equation and solve for your n. Or you use the idea that product of two consecutive numbers equal to 12. The two consecutive numbers whose product is equal to 12 is 4 and 3. Can we write them of this form? We have... All right, 4 and 3. M minus 2 into M minus 3 is equal to 4 into 3. And it's equal to 4 is 6 minus 2. 3 is 6 minus 3. All right. So haven't, haven't written this in this form. You see, n minus 2 into n minus 3 is equal to 6 minus 2 into 6 minus 3. This implies that n is equal to 6. Beautiful. If you don't want to use this method, there's no problem. Expand. You have the quadratic and you solve you have a quadratic equation and you solve accordingly. You still get the same thing. 2 times 6 permutation R is equal to 3 times uh, 5 permutation R, find R. Okay? Solution. This implies that 2 times uh, 6 factorial over 6 minus R factorial is equal to 3 times 5 factorial 
over 5 minus r factorial let's cross multiply we have all right let me divide through with a uh, 5 5 factorial times 5 minus r factorial What informs this my choice of divisor? What informs my choice of divisor is uh, I decide to take one that is factor of uh, the two. I take one that is factor of the two because this is a factor of this and it is also a factor of this. All right, you see how. Okay, now observe that this is equal to, remember, this is two times six factorial. You cannot say 2 times 6. You can't say 12. Because this is 6 factorial. All right. So what you do is to use your, your rule. Use the definition. So use the definition. So you have that this is equal to 2. 2. 6 factorial is uh, 6 times 5 factorial. And I have 5 minus R factorial. Okay? All over 5 factorial, 5 minus R factorial is equal to, this is 3 times 5 factorial. Then 6 minus R factorial is 6 minus R into. 6 minus R All right 6 minus R factorial is equal to 6 minus R minus is equal to 6 minus R into 6 minus R minus 1 factorial okay over this All right, now this cancels this, this cancels this, this cancels this. Observe that 6 minus R minus 1 is 5 minus R. So we have 5 minus R factorial here, so it cancels this. All right, and so you are left with a 2 times 6 is equal to 3 into 6 minus r. So we have that 2 times 6 is 12. We have that 12 is equal to 3 times 6 is 18. And uh, 3 times r, 3r. All right. So we have that uh, 12 is equal to 18 minus 3r. Remember, we are looking for the value of r. So, we have, this implies that, uh, this implies that 3r is equal to 18 minus 12. Eighteen minus twelve, which is six. All right, three r is equal to six. Therefore, r is equal to two. Beautiful. Therefore, r is equal to two. And you are done. Beautiful. Let's solve another problem. How many numbers greater than one fifty can be formed with? One, two, three, four, five without repetition. One of the principles of permutation is technique of counting. And what does it say? It says that uh, if you have any ways of performing a tax, and after that you have any ways of performing the second tax, the number of ways of performing the, the tax, one after the other, is m 
times n. You are given one, two, three, four, five. I want to know how many numbers greater than 150 can be formed using these uh, numbers without a uh, repetition. Observe that if you use all the numbers, you will have a uh, is tens of thousand. You have thousand, hundred, tens and units. Okay, let's do it this way. One, two, three, four, five. So if you are using all of them, if you want, if you want to use all of them at a time, that is picking five at a time, you will have five ways of choosing this. You have five ways of choosing this. You have four ways because if you take one, then you have four ways of choosing this. You have three ways, you have two ways, and you have one way. Observe that from technique of counting that this is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? Which is the same thing as what? 5 factorial. Okay? And it is the same thing as what? As 5 permutation. Five. That is taking five at a go. Okay? So that's what we have there. And you know, any five-digit number is greater than 150. Okay? So that is done. Now, four-digit number formed is also greater than this. So for the four digits, you have a... All right, 1,110 is a unit. So you have... How many ways of choosing this? You have five ways of choosing this. You have uh, four ways of choosing this. You have uh, three ways of choosing this. And two ways of choosing this. All right? So observe that this is also the same as five permutation four. All right? Good. Now, what do we mean by this thing here what do we mean by five ways of choosing this four ways of what we mean by this five ways of choosing this is that for this a uh, thousand that any of these five numbers can occupy this place any of these five numbers can occupy this place and once anyone occupies it the remaining four can occupy this once occupied the remaining three then the remaining two that is what we mean by this okay so that, that's what gives us our five. All right. Now we have to be careful when it comes to 100. 100 tens and units. Why? Because we are told that we, the number should be greater than 150. So we should not form any number that will not be greater than 150. So we have to be very careful here. Now, in this 100, in how many ways can you choose? Can you fill in this 100? In how many ways? Okay, observe that if one is here, we must make sure that five is here. And if the five is here, anything can now be here and we are done. All right, now if one is not here, if any of these, if any of the four is here, if any of these is here, one, two, three, four, any of them can be here. So we have any of them can be here, we have four. Now, once one of it is here, one can now join here. Okay? We can now join one. One can come here because if two is here and you have one here, it's 200 and something. So it can go. So we now have four here, remaining three. Then one can now join that. And you have four again. And then you now have what? You have uh, three. So this is the number of ways you have four times three, four times four times three. All right, four times four times three ways, okay? All right. Now, this is when one is not here. When one does not occupy the hundred, because if one is here, it is one hundred and. So if one is here, we must make sure that five is here, and they make once five is there. Since there is since 
since there is no zero there once five is there anything the remaining can be here okay so for that one where one is there so this is a, this particular case is the case when one is not here the number one is not starting this all right now let us take a case where one can start hundred things and units if one is starting here then not all the remaining one two two three four five not all of them can be here the only thing that can be here is a uh, five so it's only one that can it's only five that can be here so we have one way of filling this and uh, once one is there and five is here the remaining can be here and how many are remaining the remaining is a uh, two three four so three can now be here all right so we have how many ways one times one times one times three so three ways all right the total numbers greater than 150 will now be five factorial plus five factorial plus four times four times three that's 48 and then plus three okay so you have five factorial is 120 120 plus 120 plus 48 plus 3 48 plus 3 is a uh, 51 okay, so we have a uh, 240 We have two ninety one numbers. Uh, we have two ninety one numbers that will be greater greater than one fifty. Two ninety one numbers greater than one fifty can be formed using these uh, numbers here without repetition. Suppose you have any dissimilar objects, okay, and you want to arrange it in a circular form. The number of, of ways of such arrangement, the number of ways of such arrangement is m minus one factorial. Suppose you have a, b, c. I want to arrange it in a circular form. Observe, I have this a, b, c. Another arrangement that can be done a. C, B. Any other circular arrangement will be the same with any of these two. Okay? So you have a 3 minus 1 factorial, which is 2 factorial, which is equal to 2 ways of uh, arrangement. Okay? In how many ways can several flowers of different colors be set in a round table? Okay? In how many ways can you set seven flowers of different colors in a round table? Okay. Is equal to seven minus one factorial. Okay. So if you have seven colors, if you have seven flowers of uh, different colors, and you want to determine how many ways you can set it in a round table, you find out that it is what? 6 factorial, which is equal to 720 ways. Wow. Okay? So even with your 7 flowers, you can have as many as 720 ways of uh, changing style. Okay? You can change styles. All right? You have 720 ways of changing styles. If you have uh, seven flowers of different colors and you want, you want to set them on a round table. All right. Now, permutation involving identical objects. Okay. The number of ways of arranging N objects in which N one of them are alike of first type, N two of them are alike of second type, up to nk, alike of kth type, 
is given by Okay, example, how many arrangements can be made of the letters of the word kindness? Okay, now looking at the letters of the word kindness, observe that you have a N is a alike. You have two of them there. So N1 is equal to two. And you have another one, S. We have S. Two of them are there. So N2 is equal to 2. And how many is this? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right? So it is 8. We have a, a factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Okay? That gives us the, 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 the number of arrangements that can be made, that can be made with this. So this is a uh, all over two times two is four because two factorial is equal to two. So four. This device is this is equal to two times seven factorial. You can multiply out. Okay. How many arrangements can be made of the letters of the word witnesses? All right. Now we have how many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Okay. Nine of them, but we find out that uh, we have the E, we have two of them alike, N1 equal to two, okay? And we have another three alike, N2, N2 equal to three. So we have this as a nine factorial over two factorial, three factorial, which is equal to, so we expand, we multiply out, okay? To divide this, you have to. So multiply this out and convince yourself that it is equal to beautiful. All right? That's the number of uh, arrangements that can be made using the letters of the word witnesses. All right. I want to use this problem here to manually show us what technique of counting is all about. Remember your technique of counting? It says that if you have M ways of performing a tax, and after that you have N ways of performing the second tax, that the number of ways of performing the tax, one after the other, is M times N. Okay? Now, the question says, how many three-digit numbers can be formed? How many three-digit numbers greater than 200 can be formed using 231? If no digit can be used more than once. All right? Now, observe that the three digit number will be in hundreds. Okay? So I have hundred tens and uh, units. All right. Now, for the number to be greater than 200, for the number formed to be greater than 200, we must have that two or three is here. Two or three must be here. So there are two ways of filling in here. Two ways. The two ways here is two or three. All right? Now, once, once one of them is there now, we now have, if two is here, we now have that three can be here. Okay? And if two is here, one can also be here. All right? So that means that the no, number, number of ways of filling the tens here now is two. You have two ways of filling the tens. Okay? Suppose, suppose it is two that is there, then one can be here, three can also be here. All right, that means we have these uh, two ways of filling in here. Suppose it is three that is here, two can be here, one can be here. So we have two ways of filling this. And once you put one here, we now have one way of doing this. All right? Which means that the number of ways we can do that is 2 times 2 times 1, which is 4. If we use this, we can form four numbers that will be greater than 200. 
Let us see. Let's see the phone number. Since it is four, let's manually. Let's see it manually. All right? Okay. So suppose you have a, one cannot be here because if one here is here, it will now be 100 and 100 is not uh, greater than 200. So one cannot be there. So if two is here, suppose two is here, three can be here, one can be here. All right? Then suppose uh, three is here, one can be here. Okay, so if it is if this is done, we have a two, three, one is one of them. Two can fill in here or three. Okay, now suppose that it is two that is here. Okay, you will now have one. One can come in here or three. So that if you if one is here, depending on the one you choose here, if it is one that you choose here, then three should be here. Okay, so we have. Two, one, three. That's one of them. Two numbers we formed now. We are two is occupying the, the hundred position. Okay. Now, what of if it is three that is occupying the hundred position? Now, if it is three, you have if it is three that is occupying the hundred position. Observe that two can be here and one can be here. All right. Now, if two is here, that means one is here, and that will give us three, two, one. Okay, and if it is one that is here, that means two will be here, and you have what? Three, one, two. Okay, so these are the four numbers greater than 200 that can be formed using that. Okay, two ways of filling in the hundreds. Why is it not three ways? It is not three ways because one cannot be there. One cannot take the hundred position because if one takes the hundred position, then what will for, what will be formed will not be greater than two hundred. That is why we removed one there, and we have two ways of filling in the hundred position. And once you fill in the hundred position with two or three, the two ways. Then for the tens, one cannot come in. You cannot have one there. That's why when you fix one, it remains one, and then you now. Uh, one now will not come back to join that one. So one can now come back to join it, and it will now be two. You now have two ways of uh, filling the tens uh, position, and then put one there. You now have one way of that. That's why you have two times two times one. All right? That is the technique of counting. So if you do it manually, you will see that it gives you the same thing with this. All right, they will be able to do this one manually because there are not many. What of a situation where it is many, you find it difficult to do this manually before you can answer it. That is why you should appreciate the technique of counting and use it uh, accordingly. Okay, so that it saves you the heat of writing it manually before you count. All right, okay, so we end it here. Okay. If this is your first time of being here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like what I'm doing, please thumb up and remember to share with friends. All right? Drop your comment. It's welcome. Thank you. And may God bless us all and grant us a greater mathematical experience. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye.